Good morning. It's Monday, March 29th, and I'm about to begin an assembly of my brand new Elecraft K3. We got four boxes, a little under $2,000 worth of parts. That's enough to make you apprehensive, huh? And I've got the recommended tools laid out, and then some. Underneath all that is an anti-static map, mat, and a wrist strap, and it's all grounded to the station ground there. We have some uh, sorted uh, Phillips screwdrivers in different sizes, and uh, tweezers, and a hemostat, and an uh, accurate ruler. Quarter inch, half inch, and three sixteenths inch nut driver. Side cutters, long nose pliers, a couple open end wrenches. That should do it, along with the instructions. You'll notice that cup of excellent Darjeeling tea right there. That's the last time you'll ever see a cup on this uh, work surface until I'm completed. I've learned from experience over the years, tragic things can happen when you got a cup of uh, tea or any other food mixed with your assembly. Same thing goes for alcohol. In aviation we have a rule. It's called eight hours bottle to throttle. I apply that whenever I'm building anything. Sometimes I enjoy a little glass of wine to relax at night, but the problem with that is uh, it can mellow you out to the extent that you get a little fuzzy and you start you stop checking off uh, maybe your progress in the little boxes and uh, you might not always make the right decisions. You tend to hurry sometimes and you might not do that if you weren't feeling so mellow so once I start here in a few minutes it's going to be a pretty sterile environment shouldn't take that long I think I can handle it there's some muffin tins and uh, some painters tape on which I'll label those little muffin tins for all the parts and overall I'm looking forward to this experience uh, I've been in ham radio 51 years and I've homebrewed and built lots of kits, Heath kits. I, I own a K1. I'm sorry, correction, I say again, I own a KX1 and a K2, both of which I built. Now I got the K3. I also have a K9 named Coco, but she won't be in here when I'm building because I wouldn't want any static from her fur when she's on my lap to uh, translate into some sort of a disastrous uh, technical problem even though I'm I'm pretty grounded. Uh, don't forget the one mega ohm resistor in series with the wrist strap by the way. Sometimes you buy these wrist straps and uh, they're not included, especially some of the cheaper things from China. They leave that to you to figure out <laughs> where you're going to do it. Uh, the computer's off too. I don't want to be disturbed by email and other kinds of things. I want to turn my attention to all of this uh, various assembly work and try to keep all the hardware straight. I've been told the most difficult thing about this is not dropping the tiny parts and not making the wrong choices for the hardware. Apparently uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, clearances or the tolerances are very very uh, small and uh, even a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch can uh, have some uh, results that uh, you might not be too pleased with. So, uh, I think I'll finish this video in pieces and stages as I make some progress. I heard a rumor it takes about eleven or twelve hours uh, outside of inventory time to build a K3. We'll see. I'm not in any rush. I got plenty of patience. Well, here we are. It's a couple hours later. And as we pan around, you can see all the printed circuit boards and our electrostatic envelopes. And my muffin trays have been filled up pretty much. And there's bags of stuff and little envelopes in the boxes and more stuff down here there's all the front panel stuff kind of running out of room 
I didn't find the inventory that bad. I'm becoming a little less apprehensive of the hardware situation now. Looked all pretty much standard. I seem to be missing a couple things. Uh, I know I'm missing a 632 nut and I'm missing a couple of uh, very small number four split washers. I'm not sure I'm missing that 440 half incher because there's an envelope marked K SIN 3 that strangely seems to have that in there. Um, I guess I'll call Ellicraft this afternoon and uh, check it out. But all in all, it only took me a couple hours and uh, I didn't rush through it. I chose not to uh, label the parts, you know, not to go crazy because. I figured if I labeled the muffin tins and I start throwing hardware in there, I could very easily, in the heat of the moment, uh, pick something up and uh, think that I put it back when I'm checking apart and put it somewhere else and then later on pick it up and assume that uh, everything was where it was supposed to be. So I got a, a real nice little uh, caliper and I'll just check everything right before installation and then that way I'm not going to have any doubts might take a little longer but I think it'll be safer so I guess now I'm all ready to begin putting my K3 together well here we are it's 630 in the evening I've been working on and off this afternoon not really killing myself at all and uh, so far I'm up to page 24 of a 68 page manual Everything has gone absolutely perfect with not a single problem. I located all that loose hardware that I thought was missing. I had the same problem with the KX1 and the K2, except I'm embarrassed to say I actually called the factory, reported it missing, then found it the next day. So I spent a little extra time looking for it today because I didn't want to repeat that. Those guys do uh, really a heck of a job out there at Ellicraft, all those folks. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for packing most of my bags. Great job. Now look at that. I got a chance to put the serial number on, which is uh, 5244. Got all the panels on. I'm still hooked up with my strap here, so I can still touch the thing. I didn't get the antenna tuner, so I got the what did it the uh, cat cat three I guess module here in place of it that's standard because I have a uh, an SGC 237 autocoupler which uh, you know it's got a half million combinations and this is only going to be a rig for my fixed station it's not going to go anywhere I got the K2 to take places and the KX1 up there so this rig is going to stay right here it's a carrying handle, probably something I'm never going to use, but it's nice to have. Once again, I'm very, very pleased with the way everything went. Uh, I guess this is the, uh, the way of the future with SMT technology moving along as it is. I suppose those of us who still want to build things are more and more going to be relegated to putting modules together without fiddling around with discrete parts. Anyway, it was a good day. I think I'll quit for today and pick up tomorrow. With a little luck, I'll probably have this thing done in a, another day or so. But I'm in not in a rush. Well, today is Tuesday. It's Tuesday afternoon, the second day of uh, my progress on building my K3. There's the uh, DSP board all mounted to the uh, front panel board and I had a very enjoyable time when I got to this part actually putting the, uh, the front panel uh, all together everything went absolutely uh, like clockwork no difficulties whatsoever no further inventory problems I think I might have already mentioned I thought I had a couple but it turned out that uh, all the crap was 100% and I just uh, hadn't found the parts till later. In addition to Stephanie, I'd kind of like to thank uh, Susan and Ryan also for the absolutely uh, fantastic quality. And as you can see, my box of 
empty packages and envelopes and anti-static bags is growing. I don't throw anything away till I'm all done. I'm going to take a little break now and uh, when I'm finished I shall come back and uh, forge ahead. Things are going swimmingly. Okay, it's 5.37 at night, Tuesday, and uh, I've completed the uh, Anderson power pole hookup here. That was a pain in the butt. I never used these things before. Being a QRP fella, I'm happy with a Molex connector or even a RCA phono plug. No much matter to me. Uh, anyway, it was an interesting experience. Not too bad to work with once you get the that little pin in there. Uh, of course I had to run down a radio shack and figure out what kind of banana plug I could use to interface with the power distribution panel that goes to my non-switching power supply by the way, a real power supply by Astron. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna make believe this is 1960s in the space race, okay? And we're gonna take the big chance that we're gonna embarrass the hell out of ourselves by uh, turning the power on for the first time in public. I've had, oops, I've had luck with every other crap product I've ever built and I don't expect this to be any different. I've been taking my time and everything has gone very well. So the instructions here basically telling me to uh, connect the 13.8 volt DC power supply, tap the power button, just see if it lights up and turn it back off again. So let's see. You ready? <laughs> Here we go. Hey, look at that. Error messages and everything, but they told us not to worry about that. Now the LEDs lighten up. I don't smell any smoke. I'm not going to press my luck. Off we go. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, Today is Wednesday. Wednesday morning and there's the K3 all completed. I got up early today and put top and bottom covers on and had no problem whatsoever except for the little screws that go through the three transistors on the very bottom cover. I kept trying to mount them with three sixteenths inch screws rather than a quarter inch. Finally dawned on me what the problem was. So, I suppose in summary, what I have to say is I put this whole darn thing together in probably 18 hours over a two and a half day period of time. I had absolutely no difficulty, didn't have to call the factory once. The initial power up worked okay. And now, once again, in the interest of complete honesty, <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, Turn the power on once more here. And see if we're okay. Ah, all right. That's good. Now it's on to uh, synthesizer calibration according to the book. So I'll put the camera down and get going and uh, We'll see how that process works. Well, I just had my first QSO with a EW8O, that fella right there in Belarus, on uh, 5 watts into my 62 foot uh, doublet up in the attic. I got a 559 report. Not too bad. The gosh darn thing works, and it works real well, too. Haven't tried to key or anything, I just hooked up the bug. First guy I heard, guy came back to me right away. There's an awful lot to learn on this, baby. It's going to take me a long, long time. Not quite as simple as a K2, which then again wasn't quite as simple as a KX1. It wasn't quite as simple as that homebrew job right there, but... In time, I suppose it all becomes second nature. So that's it. A couple, a couple grand in a couple days, and you get a world-class transceiver. Nobody should have any fear of building this thing. The instructions are 
outstanding. The quality is superb. And uh, the amount of pleasure is 